Hey guys, Sifu Les Clements here, Black Dragon Kung Fu. Thanks for watching. So the title of this video is going to be called The Tatwas Shapeshifting and the Infinite Power of the Dragon. So I'm sure this is going to be a very alluring title for all you uh, uh, Davidite reptilian fans, but hold your horses, that's not really where I'm going. Interesting stuff, but that's not what I'm talking about. Okay, this is about shape-shifting and the top was, but you will see it's something completely different, which is very useful and very practical. Okay, I'm gonna show a few things. So, what we have to do when we learn a new art, Kung Fu, Tai Chi, or anything else, is we have to empty our cup. And to learn elemental construction, which is what we're doing, and how to build an ethereal body, we have to empty our cup so that we can taste the dragon's tea. Mm -hmm. See these dragons all over this mug? This is a gift to me many years ago from my students. They chipped in and bought this, so you guys know who you are. Thank you very much. I don't even remember. There are so many students around. I can't remember exactly who it was, but nonetheless, this is very appreciated if you're watching this and you remember. Okay, so I'm gonna move this a little bit and talk about building. this ethereal frame we're talking about. All right, so with these elements, first of all, I've talked about them. Hold on a second, let me make sure that my cup is empty. Okay, it looks pretty good, so I can taste the dragon's tea. All right, wouldn't be any good if my cup was full and I couldn't taste it, because then I couldn't offer it. All right, so anyway, the first element out of the ether the limbic A, the Akasha, or the fifth element, or the dragon's egg, the cosmic egg, the first element to come out of that was fire. Tejas, okay? The fire element, ruled by leopard. So when we're learning fire, through the first gate of fire, we learn how to puff the flame. The leopard teaches us how to puff that flame and keep that flame going the whole time, right? Puffing the flame. All right, controlling our passions, controlling our anger, not letting the fire get too high, not letting the fire get too low, right? Okay, because if those things happen, we have an imbalance. So the leopard teaches us to keep the fire steady. Okay, the discipline of being able to control the flame with the work. Okay, then the next element we had, what we talked about was Apas, the water element, represented by a silver crescent half moon. Okay, silver, remember, silver corresponds to the moon, hence the moon, also the female energy, the yin, right? The essence, uh, our magnetic fluid as humans, right? Apas, the water element, and who rules the water element? talked about that was the snake right so the snake teaches us control over the nervous system regulating the, our body water how we feel uh, hence the term chill hey man you need to chill I talked about this before because when that fire gets too high the emotions get too hot right the fire gets too low the emotions get cold and wishy-washy and all types of problems so the water element ruled by the snake came. Then the next one to come would be the earth element. Okay. Prithivi. I could be saying that incorrectly. I've never heard the word pronounced. I've read it countless times in my study and practice with these cards. I believe it's Prithi. It could be Prithivi, so correct me if I have uh, not pronounced the term right. If you understand this Tatwa system and the Sanskrit tone or language. And let me know, too, if I'm incorrect. I'd, be lo I'd love to have some info on that about the pronunciation of this. So for now, I'm going to say Prithivi, right? The golden cube, the electromagnetized block gold. Now, the gold is the color of the sun, right? So, yes, the red triangle corresponds to the sun, fire. But the golden, the gold in the cube gold is a physical manifestation of the sun as well 
However, Prithithi, this red, uh, this yellow cube we know corresponds to Earth. Now, if you look in the background of this yellow cube, everything is purple, the same color of the dragon's A, okay? So this is demonstrating the, the golden cube in the ether as Prithithi, prime material, as it came out of the ether and manifested into physical reality, right? So then we have Vayu, the air element, the power of the mind to control the thoughts, the breath, imagination, intentions, mental power, uh, telepathy, air element ruled by the crane. Air, the crane teaches us silence, patience, stability, balance, clarity, peace, right? The air element. So you see how simple these cards are. Now, each one of these cards, if I hold them over a white piece of paper, I'm not gonna zoom the camera in too close because I wanna finish. I wanna really highlight what I'm talking about here. But the point is if you put these cards on a white piece of paper and you breathe and you focus in your meditation with your eyes open on the card, then you move the card out of the way and the white surface, you will see the after image on the surface and holding this after image for as long as you can before it fades will strengthen the pineal gland in the third eye okay so the practice of samkhya we're opening the third eye and these are called tatwa cards or flashing cards okay you could probably find them i've had these for years you could probably even find it on amazon magical tatwas okay the most life-changing thing i've ever experienced i bought these years ago over a decade ago and have never, never uh, parted ways with it. It's never something I've put away. It's just kept me going. So keeping in mind that when all of these elements become balanced, then what? Then we have the ether, which is the dragon, okay? And that's what we're talking about here, okay? So we have the power of the tatwas. We have the shape-shifting, which I'm gonna get to in just a second. And then we have the dragon, which we're already touching on. Okay, so again, I'm gonna taste this dragon's tea real quick because this cup is empty right now. Oh man, that's sweet. Okay, so <clears throat> here we go. The dragon's egg, which I just demonstrated on the purple egg, right? Transmutation equals transformation. What does that mean? So this is the, the power of transmuting our raw base material into something higher. The metaphor of base metals, okay? So if we're living in the lead phase, life is not good, everything sucks, struggling from day to day, that's lead corresponding to Saturn, which is rock putrefaction, but the perfect prime material for all kinds of beautiful possibilities to grow, right? It's about restoring the innate properties that make up the human in the form of these elements. Okay, so transmutation into higher metals in metaphor, the parallel with taking care of the body and moving our levels up, increasing our value, increasing our, our power in the world, right? So transmutation equals transformation. So we can transform into the next level up butterfly into the uh, caterpillar into the butterfly type of effect, right? All right, so on shape-shifting, what do I mean? Shape-shift. Yes, changing your shape. Now, I've already uh, put forth my disclaimer, all right? So what I'm talking about here is how we do this and the ways that we do it. Okay, so building yourself is the first way is the first step to being able to shape shift, okay? Meaning, project our shape, change our shape inside the shape of our energy, the shape of our thoughts, the shape of our attitude. All these things are energies that have, that can be shaped and uh, formed into specific shapes. I guess that's what I want to say. So shapes are very important as we move through life. We can shape our energy field 
and do other things to help us navigate and get through. So we can shape our mindset too. It can be as simple as shaping your mindset to leopard, your mindset to tiger, your mindset to dragon. So it's a shape-shifting mind at the very least, okay? Now, how does it shape-shift the body? Well, like I was saying, building yourself. So you get these guys like my students, for example. If you start to watch them in time, some of my old students, this was the case too, their muscles will change when they practice leopard and their body will take on a sleek leopard-like look. See, so that in a way is physically shape-shifting, in a way, you see? So these are smaller, insignificant, smaller ways that are less, that seem less significant than a full transformation, right? Which is not what we're talking about. Shape yourself. So in order to shape yourself, you have to build yourself. So if you build yourself in a path, a mindset, something that is going to allow you to have a tangible value that you've created within yourself, is going to allow you to start shaping that. Then you can shape your mind, you can shape your thoughts, you can shape these things. Now, once you learn how to shape yourself through the practice of different things, this system, we do it through practice in the animals. If you physically practice enough snake, the snake will become a part of you. You see, so it's not like a religious thing where you have to pray to the snake for guidance. No, no, the snake in all of its infinite, infinite wisdom <clears throat> would prefer that we become the snake when we need to be. But it knows that we, we may need to be the tiger sometimes. They are all okay, they are not jealous. They're okay with each other. And I, yes, I personify them, but these are parts of our self, right? It's a part of ourselves, aspects of inside. So everything outside that you could pray to, you could pray, you could look inward and become, then things become far more possible. Then there's not as much dependency, unrealistic expectations, just like the person that wants to come in and learn dragon right away. What work have they done on their body to even prepare for such a task? Uh, they don't know that, of course. They think they're in good shape. Maybe they're an athlete, but dragon is a whole different story. Those winding and twisting, coiling movements will, you have to completely reconfigure your entire body. But that's where the leopard and the tiger and the queen break the body down so that it becomes pliable for dragon, which is what we're talking about here. And through that, we are constantly changing our shape, the shape of our bones from tiger to leopard to snake. We're changing the shape of our body into these positions constantly going from one to the other or staying in one for a long period of time, shifting to another for the same interval, or like I said, a few moves switching every single time back. Going from the crane to the leopard has an effect. Going from the leopard to the tiger has a different effect. Snake back to the tiger. They all are completely different. So this is how we shape ourselves physically in Kung Fu, right? Now, hold yourself. Once you can shape yourself, you can hold that shape and that shape is, that, is yourself. You are that shape. So <clears throat> holding yourself, holding the shape that you have created as a result of what you have built, right, is going to allow you to stabilize your presence in the midst of people, in the midst of others, right? So you may have people who are trying to screw with you. There's a lot of people that do that. They'll just try to get a kick out of you as a test. But if you're patient and you have a clear mind, the crane is watching. So think about the crane, the leopard, the tiger, and the dragon, instead of necessarily guardians inside, which I do believe there's some of that, but also think of them more as tools that can be used. Uh, skills that you have. When you know enough about leopard and how it moves, how it walks, how it carries itself, and you know about tiger the same and dragon and all of these, you can shape yourself into these when you go out. You can twist your mindset. You can do some practice of the animals before you go. So if I want to be a crane at work today, before I go to work, I can stand on one leg. I can hold. I can practice closing my eyes. I can breathe. 
and I can take on the attributes in that practice and then I can bring that into the workspace and I can be a crane all day at work, peaceful, easy going, and see if I can maintain that all day, consciously trying the whole time, breathing in and out, practicing more silence, see? Ways of holding yourself, shaping and holding, see? So once you can hold the crane, hold the tiger, hold the leopard, hold the dragon shape, for an entire duration of a specific, a specific time, then you're getting somewhere. Now it takes work. Um, I love teaching these animal styles. So if you're interested, get in touch with me on the email that's listed down below. I believe it's Wing Chun Gods at, I'm not sure it's on there. If not, centerfist at hotmail.com. You can also connect with me that way. If you're interested, we can get on Skype. I can show you some techniques for the animals, how they work, holding yourself. Once you develop this skill, then we move down to carrying yourself. Now it's one thing to be able to hold the shape, the mindset, right? The physical position, all right? The hand position of a leopard, that's one thing. But to be able to move with it is a different story. So if you can make the hand position of leopard, and you can look forward and you can hold this position, that's one thing if you know how to get low and have a really solid leopard stance, but can you move from it? And this is what divides the mimicker from the actual practitioner. So someone can mimic all day, but there's a certain level. Can he mimic frame per frame the next step of the leopard, exercising the leopard shoulders, getting low, really being down, super low to the ground, chest this close to the floor. See, can they duplicate that transition? Likely not, unless they come from a solid leopard school that teaches that. Leopard teaches us to get down in the grass and leopard crawl, which I'll demonstrate at some point in the video. But anyway, how we carry ourselves. see? A crane is going to carry itself very gracefully. A leopard is going to carry itself very agilely. Uh, agility is a specialty, right? A tiger is going to carry itself very powerful, right? A snake is going to carry itself very smooth, very fluid, chemical-like motion, very fluid, right? So how you carry yourself is basically we're building a vehicle first, and then we're going to steer it move it, take it different places. It's kind of like you're building a car piece by piece, but it's not a car. It's an ethereal frequency we're building with these, with these creatures that show up when we've done enough work on ourselves in their element, then they show up as a part of us, right? Like I said, they don't show up because we pray and ask. There's a lot more you have to work. So I prefer not to ask for something that I haven't worked hard enough for or ask myself, have I worked hard enough to deserve this yet? And maybe it's yes, maybe it's no, it just depends. All right, so how you carry yourself, and the last one, how you guide yourself. So it's one thing to carry yourself in directions, but the other thing is how you guide which direction to go, navigation. Shape-shifting requires navigation. When you change your mindset, when you shift the shape of your mind, when you shift the shape of your thoughts, when you shift the shape of your body, right? When you do all these things, you have to navigate and you have to, if certain routes are better than others in movement, certain lines, you know, like a leopard naturally steers away from people. So if someone's a leopard move, leopard, if someone who's an expert at leopard, when you see them moving through a crowd, they're graceful like the crane, but it's more agility. They're a little lower than a normal person would walk and it's just barely passable. So mm, he has this cat-like energy. He or she has this cat-like energy because their steps are really soft, which we learn from a leopard, right? So if you're moving through somewhere in one of these shapes of one of these creatures, it's just barely below the radar, but very obvious subconsciously. Um, hey, that guy's moving kind of like a tiger. It's weird. 
right? So the tiger, on the other hand, will go straight towards a bunch of people. It's fearless. It'll just walk right between them, keep going. Uh, the leopard is more cautious, not necessarily fearful, but more cautious. The tiger is bigger and stronger. It can get away with it. It can bolster itself. It's bolster its presence and, uh, and make open a hole even that's tiger. Tiger makes big holes when, it, when there's a lot of people. People back up when a tiger comes walking through to get out of the way, right? Including the leopard. All right, a snake is different. A snake is going to kind of intertwine and weave through a crowd of people. You know, his shoulders are going to move a little bit different. It's going to be barely below the radar, right? Normally, a person might try to move and get to the side to avoid someone with this clunky, clunk, clunk, because their body may not be trained in water. Whereas a snake will be smooth, his shoulders will just step right through. Almost no one will notice. It'll be very subtle, just a nice smooth step. Hey, how's it going today? You know, something very simple. So the snake, tiger, leopard, the crane will be graceful. The crane will usually find a place near a mass of people, but usually won't just walk right in. The crane is very graceful, but very cautious, just like the leopard. So it's about building, shaping, holding, carrying, and guiding or navigating, right? So I hope you've enjoyed this video called The Magic of the Takwas, Shape-Shifting, and the Power of the Dragon. If you like this video, feel free to click down there. Even better if you subscribe. All right, Sifu Les Clements out. See you next time in 